Hello everybody, and welcome to Super House of Dead Ninjas. I'm Justin, and uh, as always, because I am stuck in this perpetual hell of playing games, I'm going to be playing this game today. It involves uh, you having to explore, well, go down some sort of deadly tower to get revenge, the revenge you... I'm not too sure, I actually don't really know the story. I imagine it has to do with... Uh, finding answers. That's when I skimmed through the little comic book that came included in the game. That was a big part of it, the fact that, you know, you're going down to uh, find out what you've all what you need to find out. And uh, so, let's go. The game is a a fast-paced action platformer that is all about uh, quick reflexes, but at the same time taking it slow when you need to take it slow. When you enter the rage mode, which I was just in, when you kill a bunch of dudes in a row, you get, um, you get, a be, basically be invincible and one-shot most enemies. Uh, as you just saw there, that was, a whoopsie, that was, a, a named enemy. They are the champion enemies. They, they have a bit more health and take a bit longer to kill. And they, it's a pretty cool feature where they, um, follow, they get named after one of your, uh, people on your friends list in Steam. Or they get one of the random pre-built names. For example, of one of them I saw was Walter White. Which, uh, you know, if you don't know him, where have you been living for the last few years of your life? Uh, if you've been living in someplace like Uganda or something, maybe maybe you have, um, holy crap. Maybe you uh, got uh, Walt, uh, fucking Breaking Bad on Blu-ray and I'm just ignorant. And, you know, I've been there before. My middle name is Ignorant. Uh, my parents uh, had uh, high hopes for me from the beginning. So these purple guys are kind of annoying because they're the en the one enemy, the ninja type, that actually um, will follow you down levels. And these monkeys, don't even get me started on those goddamn monkeys. The only thing worse is the frog enemies that come in later in the game. So, uh, like most ninjas, you can wall jump, you can double jump, you can throw uh, various... Uh, you get various tools to your, for your disposal in this game. One of them that I've been using quite predominantly is a projectile weapon. Currently I'm using the boomerang because it's a, it's an endless ammo. It never runs out because you're going to be too busy. Um, you just got to wait for it to come back to you as opposed to some of the other ones, which is like the shuriken, which you throw and doesn't come back to you, so it's limited. However, when the shuriken hits an enemy, it uh, will spawn on the ground near them. Like where it hit them, and you can pick it up. Fuck me. You can pick it up after them and uh, refill your inventory. Uh, then you also get bombs, which are these things. And you can use them to destroy um, cracked ground and reach items and shortcuts that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. The last thing you can get is magic that can help you in this. And uh, my magic is a giant... Holy crap, it's a giant uh, wall of fire that does some good damage. Well, you know, I wanted to kill my friend here, and it cost me a lot of few, uh, quite a few hit points. Uh, right now I'm playing on hard mode, which is basically the game's normal mode, because the normal mode is essentially the easy mode for the game. In easy mode, you have two continues. In hard mode, if you die, you're out, and that's it. No one cares about you, and they send you home without any fanfare or hurrah. So, there are three bosses in the basic run of it that you'll hit. Um, in each floor, basically there's three different boss areas, and in each area you have a chance of facing uh, different bosses. In the first two areas, it can be two different bosses, but in the last area it'll always be the same two bosses after the other. It'll be the one-armed ninja and then the giant hulking final boss of at least the first version of the game. Oh, uh, that was... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That game... And this game has, like, it has the kind of thing where it has no pity, and it will... It's all about learning it and dying over and over and over again, and it'll enjoy killing you at the exact same time. So, if you might have noticed that that monkey was running away from me there, and that's because I have a super magic item that makes monkeys super scared of me. And, uh, you know... That's something that we all want. So Crystal Ball makes it so that I will get, I will see items on the, kind of the map's radar before they even uh, show up on the screen. And uh, usually the only item it shows is they usually will show money or the timers, which if you notice in the 
bottom right corner, I have a timer that when it runs out, I believe the Grim Reaper comes for you, at least. I've been too scared, I'm too much of a coward to get to the point where... Oh, jeez, I've never seen this room before. Where Fud Crackers. Where I've had the Grim Reaper come ap after me, because uh, whenever timers are involved, I'm too much of a baby. I blame it on my youth when I was playing Sonic, and the drowning music would come in, and it would be like, I don't want to be here right now, I would enter, like I'd have post-traumatic stress, not to make fun of the people who actually have it, but mine is worse because mine involves sonic drowning. And the last thing you want to see is your heroes drowning right in front of you. And so I'm not saying Sonic was my hero, but, you know, he, uh, he pretty much is. I'm part of the Super Sonic fan club, and, uh, anyone who isn't part of that fan club is a total loser. Because, oh jeez, those are saw blades that will, they're not nice, they will cut you up without discretion. They are, oh, you gotta be kidding me. They are mad at me that I didn't let them into the super secret Sonic fan club when we were kids. And uh, can you blame me? I don't think I'm going to be coming out of this one on top. I think I'm going to probably die even before we make it to the final boss. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Which is unfortunate, but this is a game about failure, and it's a game about learning, and that's what I'm saying to make myself feel better about playing badly when I start recording it, because that's how it works. When you start recording it, things start stop going in your favor. Alright, we're about to come to our second boss room. I'm hoping it's the turtle. Is it the turtle? It's the turtle. The turtle is the easier of the two bosses here, and um, if you get in the right rhythm, is one of the easiest bosses in the entire game. Uh, the other alternate boss that you can fight here is actually probably the hardest boss in the entire game. Because he is just unrelenting with its kind of jankiness because he summons these turrets when he lands on you. I'm sure one day in this series you'll see me fight that asshole. The two bosses that I actually fought in this run are the easier bosses. And I believe they actually spawn anytime you reach the boss room with lower health. And then the other two, the harder ones, spawn when you have higher health. Which, if that is true, is a pretty good way to balance the bosses, as far as I know. Oh, whoo! Uh, and the, I really like, one thing I really like about this game is how diverse the enemies are. And you'll run into different things as you're playing. And they all act differently. And when you first bump into an enemy, it's kind of terrifying because you don't know how to read it or how to approach this guy. And, um, it's about learning the game and, you know, with a high-paced, um, action platformer like this where the games usually only last for, like, eight minutes on a run, it's, it feels good to go in and learn the game and it's not a chore if you die immediately and have to relearn from the beginning. It makes it fun and this game is actually some of the most fun I've had in, um, uh, the gaming for a while. I'm happy I randomly... Blind bought it, and I'm saying that everyone should blind buy it as well. Well, you know, it's not blind buying if you've watched me play this. But if you turned it off at the beginning when you realized how grating my voice was... Um, oh, fuck, I froze the enemies and I was waiting for him to shoot. What an ignoramus. Um, if My voice is grating, so I don't blame you if you're like, Peace. Like, right at the beginning. I'm worried. I'm worried. The timer's going down. And I am... Oh, there we go. Well, you know, that was close. I almost uh, saw Sonic underwater reaching, reaching up, waiting for the air bubble to, to get to him, but he never got to it because I let my bro down. I let my, my little blue spiky bro down. Okay. So that's a good example of those uh, different kind of enemies where you're learning where um, when they die, they will cause a spike trap. And luckily I had a pickup that made it so I didn't actually lose damage against him because... That would be unfortunate, but then I went and immediately lost damage to the next guy that presented a threat to me, because that's just my my luck. Uh, I think we're going to skip that uh, clock and pick up another one down the road. So my weapon right now that I'm currently holding is actually a... Um, it's a very good weapon. It's a lightsaber, because you know you need lightsabers and everything. And what it does is it vaporizes the... Uh, enemies when you hit them with the lightsaber and kills most enemies if not all instantly Ooh, that's a good example of when patience is key in this game because 
the last thing you want oh the um, last thing you want is to just be rushing down and have that be your doom especially when health is so crucial in this later part of the game but as you see the lightsaber when i hit the um the hedgehog the sonic the hedgehog if you would um he was vaporized and his body did not leave that spiky corpse so uh, when I hit him with my boomerang earlier, that throw was a bit too far. That throw was a bit too short. Maybe if we meet in the middle ground, and it'll be great. Um, when I threw it there to get hit him, I, uh, I was not expecting it because my mind is conditioned to always have my super awesome Star Wars lightsaber. Oh! 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 Okay. These epic enemies still learning, as you can probably tell by my very embarrassing panicked reaction. So we're on 338, floor 338 if you look in the bottom left corner, which means we're going to be at the final boss right away, which if uh, luck is with me, I might be able to beat. I'm not as bad off as I thought I would be. Four hit points, we'll see if it's enough. I never like to assume I'm the best because, you know, I don't think I am. Well, in some things I am. In uh, sitting alone in my room crying. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Uh, right now I'm making a good example for the opposite. Playing a bit sloppy, but... You know, took a risk there that I shouldn't have. This boss is going to destroy me, I have a feeling. Uh, I'll probably be able to beat the White Ninja if luck is with me. Woo! Alright, luck was with me. Celebratory lightsaber dance. And his arm uh, explodes out and then he turns into the much bigger and much scary Abargus. That's a good name. That's what I'm gonna name my first kid. I'm actually gonna name my first kid Odysseus after the, you know, Odysseus in the Greek epic poem. I believe it's called The Odyssey of Odysseus. Wikipedia it. So this boss is actually a lot about patience. Uh, he has three stages. The first one is he summons an enemy and a bunch of scary dots of death, and then he uh, slams a. Uh, his hand into the ground to release a pus ball, and then you gotta hit the body of the one-armed ninja that you just killed because he is the the life force of the final boss. So, um, it kind of sucks because the, the balls of death are very random. As you just see, it's kind of hard to figure out where to stand to dodge them. Here, I'll use my magic attack and you can see that off. Um, and, uh, Yes, you unlock. You have a weapon unlock that you get when you um, beat the final boss without uh, taking any damage. And lo and behold, if my stress doesn't get to me, one of those random balls of death will, and I'm sent back to stage one. And that's unfortunate because you know I I'm a completionist. I like it when when I uh, unlock stuff. And as you saw there, I did not have enough in me to beat the final boss because. I was playing like an idiot in the ninja fight before, and now, of course, this is what I deserve. I deserve pure death. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this, like it. If you don't like it, just like it, because I need to feed my kids. I don't have kids. I feel guilty now for my kids in the future that they have to spend their time with me. Anyway, subscribe to Pretend Heroes, and uh, look out for more videos in the future. Thanks. Bye.